So how many people have felt like this? Recently. <laughs> Constantly. Uh, I asked earlier, real quickly, who's brand new to WordPress? Great. Uh, how many people have built at least one site with it? Okay. How many people are developers that can maybe help some of the beginners out here? We've got a few people around. Great. Well, I appreciate you all coming. This is the uh, third time I've given this presentation. <coughs> and uh, it tends to be uh, trying to have some fun with it. Please keep it interactive. Uh, if you want to download the copy of the presentation, if you go to my site, tcturning.com, uh, tips and articles and videos, if you just go to the main site, go to the learning tab and then tips and articles and scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and you can download the uh, a PDF of the presentation. So what I want to do is take you on a journey. This is essentially the foreign travel that my wife and I went through. We're mere mortals. We are not technical people. We built successfully a couple, three websites, uh, two for our companies, one's an online store. We're in the process of building two other sites uh, for new businesses that we're launching. And um, what I hope to give you is just some planning tips for your entree and your journey into web design. So whenever you go on a journey or a trip, you got to have a suitcase. You got to have your stuff with you. Sometimes you just need to get away. You know, we get snow in this area. I'm from Rochester, New York. This is, uh, I was going, we were going down to uh, word camp down in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and when I put the garage door up, this is what I was faced with last month when we had a, our last blizzard of the year, and it took several hours for them to even plow the streets out. So sometimes you just need to get away. You need to go do something different and venture into something new. So uh, what I want you to think about is what kind of a traveler are you? Are you an adventurer? Do you like the journey? You know, it's, it's, it's the journey, it's not the destination that gets you excited. You want to learn new things. Maybe you're budget-minded. You, you, know, you don't have a lot of money to spend on, on developing uh, your, your, your website or planning your journey and your trip. You know, you like to just backpack and camp or whatever. Maybe you like to make detailed plans yourself. You know, you, you know as a traveler, you're using uh, systems like Travelocity and you book your own hotels and, and all that. Sometimes you're going to hire a travel agent and they're going to set up all the uh, excursions and things like that, but you're going to just kind of venture out on your own. Or maybe you like to pay for an all-inclusive journey and a trip. You know what? I just want to sit back and I'm just going to enjoy the sights. Okay? So, how many, you know, does this, do you, could you all kind of relate to the different types of people and different types of travelers and journeys? Well, you can relate that to what kind of a web developer you might be. So, are you an adventurer? Do you like to learn as you go? Maybe you're budget-minded. Are you a detailed planner? You're going to hear the word, you know, hear the comments, sure, WordPress is easy if you plan for it correctly. Maybe you want to hire a, a developer to set your site up, do the fundamentals and you know, get, the, get the basic look and feel of your site, but you're going to add content and you're going to maintain it. Or maybe you're just going to outsource it. I want to know nothing about this, just get me to be number one on Google. See the parallels between the, you know, Type of trip you're going to do, take, you know, kind of type of traveler you are, or the type of a uh, web developer you might be. So, a little bit about us. My wife and I, are, we have real jobs, and it's not web design. We are not geeks. So, we run companies called, uh, all under the umbrella, True Creations. My last name is Ector. Ector means genuine or true in German. So, I have a wood turning business. I do architectural turning. These are uh, eight and a half foot porch columns I did for a, an historic house. 
I have a whole product line of tools that I make for spinners, people who put twist in fiber. We have a knitter here in the audience. Uh, I have portable spinning wheels and everything else. And then I run a wood turning school. My wife has a quilting business. She's got a 14 foot fully computerized sewing machine. And so she basically is a sandwich maker. Quilters make the tops of the quilts and the back. She puts a batting in it and stitches out the pattern to make the sandwich. So those are our primary jobs. But we are adventuresome. And we're also budget-minded. So when we found out about WordPress and whatnot, we said, like, you know what, we'll just figure it out. Because everybody says WordPress is easy. Right? So, a little bit about our itinerary. We had set out some goals. I built years ago our original website in Yahoo Site Builder. And you know what? It's still up and running. I haven't touched it in years. It still generates leads. I still generate sales from it. One of these days I'm going to turn it off and just redirect it to a new landing page. But it works. But it was a bear to maintain. You know, if I went, you know, every one of these things was a different page here. You know, the calendar changed to a new year. I had to go in and edit the copyright on every single page. You know, you know, all of a sudden I'm doing that 80 times. I mean, it's just a bear to maintain. So we wanted to replace our old Yahoo site. We wanted the ability to edit it a lot easier. Kathy used to always complain because she'd give me edits and I'd get around to them a month later. You know, we all know that story. I wanted to put up an e-commerce site and fundamentally we just needed a system that was much easier to maintain. So we had to go out and get, you know, you have to go out and buy tickets. So we got our tickets and our passports all lined up. Tickets. And our journey started by my attending WordCamp Buffalo in 2015. We have a very um, active WordPress community in Rochester, New York. And Kathy had been to one or two of their meetup meetings, and she heard about this thing called WordCamp. She goes, Jim, why don't you go to it? I was like, what's WordCamp? So I went, you know, showed up, didn't know what WordPress was. You know, my, my first exposure to WordPress was at a WordCamp. And, you know, when, when I came home that night, it's like, that's the best 20 bucks I've ever spent in my life. I got breakfast, lunch, dinner. I sat through six interesting presentations, and I got a T-shirt. <laughs> I said, life is good. So then, you know, went out and got some books at the library. This was, you know, create a website on a weekend type thing. Um, started attending the Rochester meetup, and, and, and we have a very active Facebook group. You can post a question to our Facebook group, 7 by 24, and you'll have an answer within five minutes. Somebody's always on it, and it's been very helpful. Started watching some YouTube videos. Google is your friend. And we kind of adopted a, a mantra of learn, implement, and improve. Just kind of continue, you know, continuously improve our, our knowledge and, um, uh, and our websites. So real high level, some basics. You're going to hear some terms, WordPress.org versus WordPress.com. This is for the newbies. So WordPress.org is where you, you'll hear the term self-hosted websites. And this is where you're doing it all on WordPress.org. You get full theme supports and plugins and, you know, there is regular expenses, but you can, you know, add SEO features, you got analytics, you can add e-commerce stores and all that. WordPress.com really started out as kind of their first blogging platform. And you can put up a real simple site there, but it's limited. But it's free, you know, if you got a real simple site, that might be all you need.
one of the biggest barriers we had was the language. You know, you start hearing things like, you know, CSS and CMS and, you know, what is all this stuff? So CSS stands for your cascading st uh, style sheets. It really describes how HTML elements are to be displayed on the screen, on paper, and in other media. It saves you a lot of work. And all your external style sheets, your templates or whatever you set up are stored in the CSS files. This is a great resource, this w3schools.com for beginners. It's um, you know, all sorts of information on there on how to, how to learn um, um, things about WordPress and, and web development and whatnot. So here's two different style sheets. Same content, just displayed completely different. Different colors, green and red. You got menus over here, you got menus over here. You've got content here, you know, different footers. All the same information, just displayed differently. And that's why when you're looking at different websites, you know, you know, the look and feel and layout is always a little bit different. And these are all things that, you, that can be controlled with CSS. For those of you that haven't seen it, this is your basic WordPress dashboard. I step back so I can see it. You've got your menu system here. You've got some updates. It tells you, you know, oh, you know what? You've been slacking off. You've got to install some updates. You've got some tools. You've got some posts. You've got media, pages. Here's a, uh, your theme that I'm using. Here's my WooCommerce. I got products, I got appearances, you know, SEO, all the different things that I've in installed. When you first enter in, I can, I can turn on some statistics, how many people are hitting the website, what are my top posts, here's things that have been, you know, malicious login attempts, some spam that's been blocked, um, you know, here's a, you know, took an order already this month, uh, WordPress events, oh, look at this, WordCamp Hamilton happens to be today you know you know so it's just you know uh, that's your basic dashboard you'll look and you'll see it and, and, you know I'm not going to go into a live demo on this but you'll see it throughout the day or go to the happiness bar and somebody will show it to you this is the basic WooCommerce WooCommerce is the is the uh, plugin in that I use to drive my my store and just wanted to show you the basic page layout. Here's all the different products. Here's, you know, images. Here's descriptions. Is it in stock or not? What's the price? What's the category? Here's the tags. Um, some uh, SEO uh, ratings, things like that. So uh, just, again, wanted to give you an introduction to what a, an e-commerce store would look like. You know, you can add a new product here. You can import. You can export. You know, things like that. So, just what the basic page looks like. So now we get into themes. And themes are really um, your site's appearance. You know, so you got, you know, it's the clothes you're going to be wearing. You know, you got to get out the, you know, your, your swag. You know, your, your fancy WordCamp shirts and whatnot. So it's your site's appearance. WordPress.org is a repository. So you can go and search WordPress.org for themes. So WordPress is easy. Selecting a theme that's going to look and give you the look and feel that you want could take you days. <laughs> I'm just trying to put it in a perspective. It just, you know, there's so many options. There's th hundreds and hundreds of themes available. There are free themes that come with your basic WordPress install. You'll hear the term 2015, 2016, 2017. You have to have one theme in order to, to have your basic site come up. So WordPress, when you do have it installed and you're hosting by your hosting company, you always get at least one theme and then you can overwrite it and, and pick a different theme. What's happening here? And then there are paid themes. So you've got, uh, you'll hear uh, 
names like Elegant Themes, Theme Forest, iThemes, Studio Press, and one of the sponsors for this, this conference is, is um, Theme Look. Um, so they all, you know, here you, you, you pay, you might pay $50 or $100 or, you know, $10 or $2. I mean, they're all over the board, but it's a paid theme. The advantage of the, uh, them is that, that they're usually tested and bug-free and, you know, security maintained and whatnot. So as I continued on my, our journey, you need, you know, when you travel, of course, you need a guidebook, right? When we all go on vacation, you know, we have AAA, you've got, what, CAA, is, it, is that what it's called here? You can go get a guidebook. Well, I needed somebody to guide me down building my systems. So for whatever reason, I had the bright idea I was going to start with my e-commerce site. Now again, I had just been to WordCamp Buffalo. I just learned about this thing called WordPress. Had never touched it, and so I went on YouTube and I found this guy, Josh Jackson, and he had about an almost a three-hour video, step by step, on how to build an e-commerce site using a my style uh, my style theme. So I sat down at my kitchen table. I put my Roku on on the TV, big TV, and I went start, stop, start, stop, and in a weekend, I built my first e-commerce store. Made no sense to me, but it was up, it was running, I had content in it. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't believe it. It would have taken me months to try to figure it out by myself, but through a YouTube video, step by step, got me going. Kathy, my wife, she wanted a general site. She found this woman, Katrina, uh, I can't think of her name, uh, last name, but Katrina, she's got a whole series of uh, videos, the same thing, how to create an online store with virtue, and, and she used it, uh, the virtue theme, so two different themes, my style versus, versus virtue, and my wife built a, her general site with that. I then built my general site uh, using my style. And then in the last year or so, we have discovered this woman, Corey Ashton. She's out of um, uh, Texas, and she's got, every week she puts up a, anywhere from a three to seven minute video. She, has drank, she drinks way too much coffee. She goes 90 miles an hour. But she, she's got over 200 videos, and they're just, uh, they're great. They just, you know, if you got a question, it's like, you know, how do I do such and such? If she's got a video on it, boom. I mean, it's just short, sweet, right to the point, get you to it. Thank you very much. And you go <laughs> and put it. So these are, our, these are the tour guides that we've, uh, we've been using. So then, of course, you know, when you get to your hotel and whatnot, you got to unpack, you got your DOP kit and whatnot. And these, this is your plugins and your tools that you're going to use to build your site. So plugins add functionality, um, typically add very specific set of features. Now, terminology, Codex. Codex is basically the user manual for WordPress. You know, it took me a while to figure out what Codex meant, but <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, if anything you want to go find out, it's in there. If you can't sleep at night, go read it. Uh, WordPress.org is a repository. There are, again, our played, paid plugins. And then there's tools like Jetpack. You'll hear Jetpack, you'll hear the term Jetpack a lot. And it's a, it's a very popular major plugin created by Automatic. All right? And they're the people behind WordPress.com. Of course, there's language barriers. I mean, I fought with this for a while, you know, being a non-technical person. It's like, all right, I know what I want to do, but I don't know what to, what to call it. I can't even do a Google search. You know, what's this thing with images that's, that go by? And when you bring up, a, you know, a web page, I don't know. So you got to, you know, start to learn the terminology. You know, so you got sliders, you got light boxes, you got menus, you got sidebars, you got footers. I mean, you just have to, you know, and and... By attending um, WordPress meetups, 
going to word camps, watching videos, things like that, all of a sudden the, all this terminology will start to make sense. But for us, you know, mere mortals, you know, you just don't get frustrated, just keep participating, and it will all of a sudden one day it starts to click for you. So coming up with the terminology. Understanding basic page layouts. You know, you can have a wide page, you can have a box page, you can have full width pages, you can have sidebars, you know, right side, you know, both sidebar. You, know, you just, these are just terminologies that you're going to have to come up and, uh, and understand. You know, where's the menu bar, sidebars, image sliders, image galleries. That's a whole other topic. Um, forms. You know, these are all things you just have to kind of, you know, muddle through. Um, is this making sense? Muddling through makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what are some of the major tripping and stumbling points? Because, after all, WordPress is easy, right? Yeah. Okay. The big thing I found is media. All right, here's a media page. All right, we're... So I've got images, I've got PDFs, you know, I've got uh, articles that I've written, white papers you can download. I mean, so every one of these pictures, I've got to take the picture, I've got videos, a sound, PDF, but every one of these things I've had to edit, um, uh, crop. I mean, it just takes time to, to do all the back end work. Actually, deploying and filling out your, you know, the information on WooCommerce is pretty easy once they get everything ready for it. So, the next thing you got to do when you're traveling, all right, you're all settled in, you're in a, this new, new project, a new visiting a new site. You got to get your maps out and figure out where you're going to go, right? So, where do you go to get information? WordPress.org, of course. WordPress.tv. So every WordCamp, they're videoing me right now, and, and who knows, at some point, this will be put up on WordPress TV. So you can search any WordCamp, any presentation. If you've heard about some good presentation in Ottawa or whatever, you can go see it and watch it on your, on your computer. Google's your friend. Just, you know, how do, I, how do I WordPress question mark and it will go you'll find it for you. YouTube has been wonderful. Great place to get information. Books, of course. Uh, your local meetup groups. And WordCamps. I mean, the fact that you're all here at a WordCamp is, is, is great. You know, you're here to get information, meet people, have questions answered. So, booking your hotel. All right, I go put up a website. Now what do I got to do? I got to go register a domain name. So one of the sponsors for this event, WordPress is a community. For those who are brand new, it's open source software, which means it's more or less free. And there's a whole community that, that supports you and, and helps you in this environment. It's funded, you know, this, this event is funded by sponsors. So, you know, we need to support our sponsors and things like that. So out there in the lobby is, is Hover. That's a place you can go register your domain name. That's where you get your .ca. Then you have your hosting companies. And you've heard, you know, Bluehost, SiteGround, DreamHost. Um, these are all, you know, DreamHost, Bluehost, uh, Green Geeks, uh, GoDaddy, they're all help pay for this event, right? This, their business is to host websites. So you have your register your URL, and then I gotta go pay somebody to host my website and do the WordPress install, then I can go build my site, right? I gotta put it someplace. So even though WordPress might be free, you're gonna pay, you know, five, 10, 12 bucks a month to one of these companies to house your website. You're gonna pay an annual fee to register your, your URL. But in the scheme of things, it's you know very inexpensive. 
um, I, we happen to use um, site ground. It's in uh, Bulgaria. A lot of us in Rochester use them. They've been wonderful. High reliability. I can call them 7 by 24. You get to talk to somebody who has usually pretty good English, and they um, um, have been very responsive. And, um, and it's just a good company to work, for, work with. So again, WordPress is free, but you do have to pay to, to house it and whatnot. So of course, we, then we have the problem of how do I do currency exchange, right? How do I, you know, if I want to put up an e-commerce store, how do I, how do I, you know, move money into my bank account? So the big guy is WooCommerce. There's a, and the nice thing about WooCommerce is, you know, you basically house all your information. It's on your site. It's in your database. Equid is a third party. That's, you know, if you've got a little smaller, uh, you know, number or quantity of items you can use. But that's actually outside. So, you're, you know, have you ever been to uh, a site where you want to go do a PayPal payment and it leaves the site, takes you to PayPal, and then brings you back? Like the U.S. Postal Service does that, okay? You know, I want to go pay for, you know, I want to ship a package. I want to go pay for it, it with PayPal. It takes me to PayPal and then brings me back. Equid does the same thing, all right? WooCommerce, they never leave your site. So the issue with putting up an e-commerce site is that image editing is, takes the most time. I mean, it's just a bear. Can I just ask you a quick question? Sure. Do either of these cost money? Um, do, do either of these cost money? Uh, I'm using a free version of WooCommerce. If you need additional advanced functionality, you may have to buy, purchase a plug-in. And um, I think the same thing. I think there's a free version for, you know, 10 or 20 items, and then, you know, you get above that, then you have to pay. So, your image editing takes the most time. Get a photo booth. You can't stress enough. You got to have quality photos. You know, you can't be, you know, if, uh, how many people are, like, uh, in the craft business, selling jewelry or stuff like that. Anybody like that? You know, anybody want to sell stuff like that? Oh, never mind. We'll continue right. Like a little white box you buy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Light box. You know, you you know, a photo booth is a little, you know, huh? White. Yeah, light box. It's a white box. It's got no light. It's just white. It's white with, with lights on it, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just gives you, allows you to take a clear photograph you know, without a lot of glare and things like that. Now, 72 DPI, that's all you need for your images. Um, we had a store recently in Rochester that, that uh, put up their new website because I think somebody's daughter or whatever wanted, wanted to be the web developer, web designer. The first page, it was taking 10 minutes to load the first image. It was so big. Just because you have a camera that can take a 36 gigabyte image doesn't mean you need a 36 gigabyte image. 72 DPI. And in WordPress, 500 by 500 DPI is very common. You don't need to go much bigger than that. Now, I use GIMP, which is a open source uh, image editing package. It's like uh, Photoshop, but it's free. I use about 0.001% of its capability because I basically crop and resize and maybe I do a little image enhancement. I use Fastone Capture. Fastone Capture, you can take a whole bunch of images. So I'm making these little drop spindles. That's a, a stick with a whirl on it that you twist to put uh, twist and fiber. You know, so I'm taking photographs. I, you know, I, I'll set up. I might shoot 30 of them. I'll then crop them, and then I'll run them through Fastone Capture, which will convert them to 72 DPI by 500 by 500, and put it in a PNG format for me. And it will, will do all 30 of them in, in about 20 seconds. So I mean, it's great. It's just a nice tool to do a, you know, a bulk 
uh, uh, conversion of images. And then ColorZilla is a, um, uh, a picking tool. It's just an add-on you can put on Google so that you know, if you're trying to match a, a color on a different website or whatever, you can, you can pick it. These are all Windows. Uh, and they may be available for Mac too, I don't know. But they've been, you know, again, very helpful. So when you're traveling, of course, I would recommend keeping a journal. This is my book, WordPress, the website WordPress. And I started out first, first page, 9, 13, 14, WordCamp Buffalo. And every meeting I've gone to and every, <laughs> uh, you know, anything I've gone to or attended or video that I watched that made sense or whatever, I got a page in here with a note and I can go back and reference it. So you want to keep a journal. You know, keep tips in there. Uh, you can list out, you know, you hear about a cool plugin, you want to go investigate or whatever, just kind of write it down. Put your corporate standards in it. All right. You're going to come up with a logo. What are your corporate colors? Things like that. You know, you want you don't want to be you know you want to be able to, to get that stuff quickly uh, have it quickly at your fingertips. Maybe there's some logins, your vendors, your renewal dates, things like that. And most importantly, how do you how you did something? You know, how did I do this? <laughs> I just did something that was great. You know, you want to document it. Now, safety tips. When you're traveling, of course, you're all familiar with money belts and things like that. How do you keep your information safe? Can't stress enough the importance of a child theme. So, how do I describe this? Bring, it will tell you. <laughs> okay. Uh, I bring up WordPress. It's got my standard, uh, you know, 2016 or 2017 or 2018 theme. I go out, I install the virtue theme because right, I like the look and feel of virtue. I'm not recommending that. I'm just, it's one I, I know. <laughs> right, so you bring up virtue. And I can just build my website like that. And if I'm, you know, a beginner, and I'm not mucking with any, you know, trying to do any kind of customization or, or whatever. Perfectly fine. Well, you know, every, every month or every two months, you're going to get an update to, Word, to WordPress. You're going to get an update to the virtue theme. And if I've done, you know, nothing, if I've done no real customization and the theme gets updated, no problem. But whenever you're doing something, it's like, okay, I got three buttons here, and, and in the theme, they come as green. Well, I want them blue, because that's my corporate color. So I've gone in, and, and, and in the beginning, I didn't know how to do it. I had a WordPress, one of our meetup groups, I said, how do I change these buttons from green to blue? And Michelle Ames, who just spoke before me, she went over and sat down and said, well, here, here's the code line, and you change this number to this number, it's now blue. Well, I've changed, the, modified the CSS, all right? But I showed you earlier the two different screenshots. So I've modified the CSS. That's fine, but if I get a new update for the, my theme, it will rewrite that. So I've lost that work. So we do, what we do is we create something that's called a child theme. It's basically a duplicate, or a, you know, it's, it's a child of your basic theme. And there's a plug-in that says create child themes. So you, you, know, you install the plug-in and you say create me a child theme, and it goes out and creates you a child theme. Now when you do your edits, it's all done in the child theme, in the CSS and the child theme. But when you install an update to the theme, it just updates the theme and you haven't lost all your edits. So it's very, very important that if you're going to do any kind of customization, tweaking, moving, changing, padding, whatever, that you do it in a child theme. So your recommendation is using a plugin? To create the child theme. And then in your, in your Listing on the sidebar here, there's themes. You'll see my style dash child or virtue dash 
child. It will tell you. I, I'll, I'll come back to that image and show you. Yeah. So are you foregoing the uh, updates? I'm sorry? You're, you're foregoing the updates? You're not, you're not no, I am. Up, all, uh, the, the child themes, again, I'm not real technical how this works, but basically it updates. When you do an update, you're updating the, ma the parent theme, and all your edits are would stay within the child theme. So when a web browser calls it, it brings up the, the theme and then it brings up the, uh, the display of the theme and then the display of the, um, of the um, um, edits. Okay. So are you saying when uh, the web page updates, with the child theme, you don't have to do anything, it's just stay the color, will stay the Yep, color. yes, okay. yes. So you always, if you're going to do any kind of customization to a website, to your website, you want to do it in a child theme. The other thing is backup, backup, backup. Can't stress enough because you will get hacked. You will do something stupid. Stuff happens. There's going to be an update to a plugin and it's going to whack your site or whatever. You need to be able to roll back to a backup. And there's plugins that you can put in to. Um, um, uh, you know, do that, help, you know, back up your site. Don't, re, don't depend just on your hosting services backup. So when I showed you the, the picture of the image and it says I, I need five updates for my plugins, before I would update any of those, I make a backup by pressing a button because I've installed a plugin. Press the button that says make a backup. It goes out, takes 10 minutes, makes a backup. Puts a copy up on my Dropbox, okay? Now I can go install the, the updates to my plug.